No, you gotta do it right if you're gonna do it at all. Loud. Project out here. I want your voice to bounce off of that wall. Town school motto is launch your future through pride and achievement. The boys and girls worked to develop this motto because they felt it epitomized what we are about. We have an academic mission, but it's a mission that is a goal for our immediate future, but also for the 21st century. My philosophy as an educator is that every child can learn. And that is our goal through our school plan here at London Town. We've developed that school plan with the help of our community leaders, our school business partner, our parents, and others, especially our staff members. As we look at that thought of all children can learn, we strive to provide whatever it takes in order for each boy and girl to reach their potential. If a child needs a particular program, that is what we strive to provide. We look at different learning styles of children and we try to adjust our instruction to adapt to that particular learning style. Our hope is that each child will be successful, that every child that comes into our door will be eager to be here as indeed they are, and that each day will be a productive learning experience and a growth experience for our children. As in many schools, our day here at London Town begins with our London Town Morning News. Good morning, I'm Elizabeth Marriott with today's announcements. Mr. Kaplick, the strings teacher, will not be here today. Today's menu is cheeseburger or hamburger, on bun, choice of two, oven fries, lettuce with tomato and pickle, or frozen treat. Chef salad is available today. Now here is Maria with the birthdays. Best wishes to Kelly Farrick in Miss Kotler's kindergarten, Nadia Kang in Senoritas Vitari's first grade, and Teshla Singh in Miss Karen's first grade. Now here is Jennifer with this day in history. General Robert E. Lee surrendered to General Ulysses S. Grant in Appomattox, Virginia to end the Civil War in 1865. Charles Steinmetz, an American physicist and electrical engineer, was born in Germany in 1865. This is Jennifer signing off for WLTS. Have a televised Tuesday. Dragon. What do we know about dragons? That they roar fire. They do, don't they? They breathe. And they breathe Some fire. can breathe. They roar. Burn. The language arts program that we have at London Town is the program that we build the rest of our curriculum around uh, to make this easy for people at London Town to work with. We have implemented all of this into our school plan. We have two major parts of our school plan and reading or language arts is part of both of those. The first part is to improve the academic performance of all students in language arts. That means the entire student body here at London Town. And the second part of our school plan is a little bit more specific than that. It's to improve the reading comprehension of our African American and Hispanic students. We have many, many different ways at, at London Town that we try to do these two things. Um, one of the most important things that we do is to get volunteers to come into our building to work with us. We have uh, some retired people who live in our community who come and work with us on a regular basis, sometimes as many as two or three times a week. 
We have uh, parents of our children who have volunteered to come in. Some come for something as simple as a field trip, but many others are here on a daily or weekly basis working with us in one of our reading and language arts areas. Some of these people have been specially trained to help our low-level readers or work with our enrichment programs. Some of our enrichment groups might be doing research in the library where they have um, access to a CD-ROM or are using research materials such as an encyclopedia or an atlas. Uh, frequently a volunteer will help out a classroom teacher by taking a small group of these students into the library where they can access these materials and where they have the little bit of extra attention that comes from having a parent volunteer in there to be able to answer their questions as they crop up. We have uh, light writer boards, which are located throughout the building. These light writer boards allow boys and girls to display the writing that they have uh, done during the classroom. We also have an author of the week bulletin board, and our boys and girls can be highlighted and spotlighted with their work on author of the week, and artist of the week is right alongside it. We have a We Deliver program, which is um, a mailbox set up throughout the building where boys and girls can write letters to each other, drop it in our mailbox, and we have a complete postal staff who are trained at the beginning of the school year to work with um, the letters that come in just like a regular post office would be set up. I'm going to give you a clue. Your two big triangles need to be looking like this. Okay. There's your first clue. This is a third grade class with um, students who have been working in the attributes and shapes science kit. Part of the kit is, with the problem solving, uses tangram puzzles. And integrating the science kit with the language arts, the teacher has read a story, and the story is about a man, an old man from China, who has a very prized possession. <clears throat> it's his uh, ceramic tile, square ceramic tile. And he accidentally dropped the tile, and he spends the rest of his life trying to put the tile back together into a square. However, it dropped into seven geometric shapes, and his entire lifetime he came up with all kinds, all different pictures, all different shapes, but not the square ceramic tile. And you can take the seven pieces and put them together into um, something that looks like a cat or something that looks like a camel or a dog. And that's what these kids are trying to do put the pieces. pieces back into the shapes, um, not necessarily the square, possibly a square, but also the, the um, shapes of different animals. And once they have tried several, experimented with sev several shapes, decided on the one that they prefer, then the kids are going to write stories about their animals and share them with each other. If you want a child or if somebody wants to uh, remember the information for a long period of time, you can read something to them and let them hear it. You can write it on the board and let them see it. You can let them do something with their hands. If you let them use all three ways, they'll remember the information a lot longer. They'll remember the processing skills, the, the strategies they used to solve the problem of putting the puzzle together into something recognizable and doing it with their hands, physically doing something, will help the kids remember and be able to use that strategy at some other time. It's incorporated into math, it's incorporated into the social studies, and all across the curriculum, solving the problem, solving the questions, what processing skill, what critical thinking skill can be applied to solve the problem. There are some uh, coins that we're going to see if we can recognize, okay? Can you recognize this coin? Albert? It's a quarter. It's a quarter. And who knows the value of a quarter? How many cents? Twenty-five. Twenty-five cents. We at London Town like a hands-on approach to math. We like to use math manipulatives. We like to have the children as involved as possible. We like to do daily problem solving. The one class in particular that I know that is very good at using math manipulatives will be working with money, and the children will be working in cooperative learning groups. 
they will be working in groups of three. There are five groups of three. And the first thing they will do is they are going to brainstorm and identify 35, money. 35, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. So how much do we have? 40, 41 cents. And once they have talked all the ways that they can use money, then they will work together and regroup coins. They'll be working with pennies and nickels and dimes. They will learn to regroup them. They will assess and evaluate. They'll talk about daily applications of money and how they can use it and how the use of regrouping and the different ways that they can regroup coins can be handy in their everyday life. They understand the use of pennies and nickels and dimes, and uh, they, the more they get, the better, the happier they are. I'm thinking of two coins, and they are equal six cents. Yes. Five cents and um, one cent. My goodness, that's terrific. You have a little bit of social studies, how to work together in cooperative groups. That's a social skill. You have a math skill because you're counting and you're regrouping and you're seeing how five pennies can also be regrouped as a nickel, how two nickels can be regrouped as a dime. And then I do believe in some cases the teacher is going beyond that and she's going to give them a problem where if you have two dimes and you have 16 pennies, how much will you have in all? And can you regroup this total in a different way? A math happening is a good example of when these children can apply this skill of using money. They might come to school the following day and say, last night we went to the store with our parents and we had to buy groceries and we helped them count out their money. And this is how much money we spent on bread and this is how much money we spent on milk. And I think right here is a, a practical application of and skill of what they have just done in the classroom the day before. Yeah. See the back of it there? What do you think it's for? I think it's a good idea to have elementary school students exposed to technology because it's here to stay. Technology is here to stay. It's, it's all it does is become more and more popular. Anywhere, any workplace that you go to, you see a computer or technology in the home. No matter where, where you go, there is technology. And I think the sooner that students learn how to work with technology, the better they'll become at it. Sixth grade computer club boys with Mr. Ward, the teacher, were taking apart and trying to put back together some old non-functional computers. We have an Apple 2GS network where the boys were doing several programs. On the other side are the Macintosh computers and Mr. Ward was helping some of the boys uh, learn how to use a CD while working on different applications. Some of the other boys were working in Claris Works creating a slideshow for the parent presentation that's coming up. The computer lab at London uh, Elementary School uh, is a great facility for children to learn. It's another means of learning. It's a great tool for them to learn. They do a lot of word processing. Uh, they do creative math problems on the computers, on the Macintosh computers. Um, every class comes to the computer lab at least once a week for half an hour, if not more. And there are off times where students can come in and do other works. South of Key West, 42,804 square miles. Square. Technology provides engaging and meaningful learning experiences. The advances in technology are constant and can be overwhelming. Our students seem to like this challenge. Our media center has two different forms of technology for students to use, the video disc player and the CD-ROM workstations. Both use optical discs that store vast amounts of information. Technology is integrated into the curriculum here at London Town. This is a third grade class. Some of the students are using sources to research information on countries around the world. Other students are using the video disc player to enhance a nutrition project that they will present to their class in Spanish. Students become more active participants in the learning process when using technology. 
cooperative learning situations seem to occur naturally in this setting. Both CD-ROMs and video discs provide multisensory delivery so students with various learning styles benefit. Technology is helping today's school environment to be as stimulating as the multisensory world outside of school. London Town is very fortunate to have a Spanish partial immersion program. We have this program through our fourth grade. It's been researched and noted that language acquisition is much easier the younger a child begins. They are learning their health, math, and science in Spanish in a very meaningful, exciting manner. Mm, the program um, is organized in a way that the students go half of the day with a Spanish immersion teacher, which they learn the subjects of math, science, and health. And the other part of the day, half the day, they go to their English teacher, which they learn language arts in English and social studies in English. In second grade, the curriculum requires for them, for my students, to learn about the animal kingdom. That's one of the units in science that we learn the animal kingdom. So, for example, my class has been studying the categories of animals, vertebrates and invertebrates, and also about their habitats. But in order to be a more visual um, and enhance the understanding of the language since I teach everything in Spanish, I have developed the unit uh, of the rainforest. So the habitat of the animals, uh, the students place the animals according to their habitat and the different layers of the rainforest. And the mural that we have in our class um, provides for them a good opportunity to visualize this activity. And the students also have made little, um, little rainforests um, they have work in pairs uh, and assume responsibilities about uh, the work that they needed to do. Since we have been working with the animals in their habitat, today has been a good experience with the food chain. They have learned that um, how one animal provides food for the other one, and we start with uh, and applying this to the different layers also of the rainforest. For example, in one of the pictures, they saw how the insect eats the grass, how the frog eats the insect, and how the snake eats the frog, and so on. Um, to have an idea how each animal provides for their own food. And they also as uh, the activities that they were doing was to build their own chain, select which animal perhaps will provide food for the other one. It's important for the students learn and be immersed in the language by looking at the objects and relating the name of the objects, uh, the name with the object. So they won't rely necessarily in translation. So the visual and the hands-on activities help them to develop their cognitive process into the language. London Town boys and girls achieve in many, many ways, and we love to share their achievements with our parents. One way we do that is to have grade level parent sharing sessions. One of those is our animals around the world celebrated by our second grade students. It's a unit where the boys and girls begin with science. And working with science, learning about animals as part of the program of studies, they also incorporate many, many writing skills, reading skills, their math skills are also incorporated, and they share their learnings, their songs, with parents. This is my animal report, and inside it I have I have the writing I did about the whale, and I have my I have my picture about the whale, 
here's a seal, and here's a macaroni penguin, and here's um, a mother polar bear with her cub, and here are two penguins, um, a, mother, a mother and a little baby. This is my world picture, and um, this is my Antarctica picture, and this is my whale picture. This is my pyramid we did. It's a killer whale. Um, this is my world picture. This is a penguin and a killer whale and a seal and walrus and a polar bear. My name is Brittany and we're cutting out canopy animals and gluing them down onto a piece of paper. And we're cutting out trees and leaves and after we're done cutting out vines and trees, we're gonna glue the canopy animals onto the canopy. The animals in the canopy, um, they, they like to stay up there because they like the sunshine and they don't like the dark, so they stay up there. Hi, my name is Ryan and I'm doing a report about puffins and they can hold as many as 60 little fish at once. This is what a puffin looks like on a puffin island. And reindeers have antlers, and every spring, new antlers sprout out their heads. Hi, hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm from the White Stork Group. White Stork and Black Stork are the most typical kind of storks in Europe. Frogs live in the water for the first part of their lives, and the second part of their lives, they live on land. Hi, my name is Stevie Jones, and I'm in the bear group. The, br uh, the brown bear it can have four to two babies, and the, gri and the brown bear is the grizzly's ancient ancestor. I'm Tony, and this is our data retrieval chart. Um, we did pictures, and we did, like, some words. So it shows that um, the animals, the birth, the habitat, the food, the size, the lifespan, the enemies, and the interesting facts. I'm Ben Burkett, and this is our mural. We have worked on this with an overhead projector with these little clear sheets with stuff on them and put them up to a piece of paper on the wall and we drew on them and then colored them in. And it was really fun for all of us. And we have lots of different animals like camels, giraffes, elephants, cheetahs, hippos, lions, and ostriches. Hi, my name's Patrick and we had to do research papers and we wrote it on this and I did about tigers and the mother tiger um, has their babies alive and they like to eat meat. Hello, my name is Awa. I'm from this Damascus. I'm, and this is the African masks that I made. This is, they're, they're, an Af they're an African animals. This is an hippo and a lion. Hi, I'm Samir and these are the worlds we made. And mine's right up there. And we had to like um, look up on the map and see like what the country, the states look like. Welcome to our second grade animals around the world. Our boys and girls have worked hard this evening to prepare this play, well these, these songs and these plays to share with you. We want to give a special welcome to all of our parents, our grandparents, friends, neighbors, Everyone that's come to share with us this evening. I'm going to the hillside to eat some delicious new spring grass. <laughs> Elementary formed a business partnership 
with Aetna Life and Casualty Insurance Company. Part of our partnership was working with Channel 10 with Aetna to develop an anti-violence campaign. We are a part of society and violence is a concern of the greater society. We wanted to look at ways that we could contribute to stop the violence in society. Therefore, in working with Aetna and Channel 10, we developed an anti-violence campaign. All of the students worked together to make a puzzle. And as we put the pieces of the puzzle together, we shared our theme of pick a friend, not a fight. Let's stop the violence altogether. There, there's a, fam a favorite quotation uh, from Marion Wright Edelman, who is the uh, founder of the Children's Defense Fund. Uh, and she talks about the need for service in our communities there. And she said something about service is the rent that we pay for living. And I think that summarizes uh, Aetna's perspective here in that we have an obligation as a corporate citizen in western Fairfax County, we have an obligation to get involved in our schools and communities here to effect change and to make things better. Nathan Sigler. Sean Stiles. At London Town, we have many, many children who Ross work Taylor. very hard to achieve, and we want to recognize and give those Harris. students a pat on the back. One way that we do that is to honor them through quarterly exactly. honor roll assemblies. Each quarter, we invite our parents to share as we recognize the boys and girls who are able to achieve all A's, and that's the principal's honor roll, and also the boys and girls who were able to achieve the AB honor roll. And these students are given a certificate, they are recognized for their achievement, and they are encouraged to continue. For those students who, for whatever reason, may be they did not attain the honor roll, it's a source of encouragement to say, perhaps not this nine weeks, there's always the next nine weeks. And so therefore, everyone is encouraged and recognized through our honor roll assemblies. London Town has been in the Centerville area for over 26 years. It has been an exciting school for growth and for change. We have children from many, many countries. We have teachers from all over the world. We are a school where academic excellence is expected and attained. It is a school where everyone has the opportunity to learn. It's okay to make a mistake. We all grow together. London Town is indeed a community, a community of learners, a community of those who are growing. And we move together as we help each other move into the future. <laughs>